So I was pleased to present an analysis at this year's ASH regarding the ARM3, or the JAK inhibitor naive arm for the manifest study of ruxolitinib plus palabrasib, and taking a deeper dive as it relates to symptoms and symptom response. As we assess symptoms, we use the MPN SAF, which uh, looks at several different individual symptoms from a zero to 10 scale. And there are many ways of looking at these sort of data. Historically, they've been looked at as a total symptom score and a change in the total symptom score. Now, many of us have felt that this is probably uh, an insensitive kind of measurement of change, realizing that there's probably clinically meaningful changes that occur before re reaching a, let's say, 50% reduction in the total symptom score for a range of reasons. You know, one, individual symptoms can have a different impact for an individual. You know, a higher burden of pruritus, for example, may be more problematic for a patient than, let's say, night sweats or some other piece. You know, we're truly quantifying the subjective. So in this analysis, we anchored with the patient's global impression of change, and we're able to try to look at the minic minimally clinically significant difference in terms of symptoms, and saw that really a one and a half to two point difference or decrease in an individual symptom really might be very clinically meaningful for that individual patient. Uh, and that matches with much of the initial analysis we had done when these symptom scores were developed. Dr. Amy Lou Duick, a statistician at Mayo Clinic, and I who have partnered on these things. So I think we need to listen to our patients as it relates to symptom response, but I think there's a lot of granularity in these data, and at this year's ASH we're looking at other areas such as absolute change and other ways of looking at these data beyond just total symptom score response.